Lately, in the last few months, I've been working in the school that I work at is a prep to 12 school, and I've been working in the high school part of the school. Up until then, mostly been in the primary school. Couple, last couple of months, in the high school part. With those age kids, it's, it's such a different job. Like, obviously, the kids are very different, but the job itself. I just want to give you a synopsis, a quick synopsis of my first day working in the high school part of the school. So, in primary school, you know, Teacher's aid, I'm like sort of just helping out in the classroom, just doing random odd jobs, helping the kids out. Oh, you know, this one can't spell this word. This one's punching that one. We've got to stop that. This one's crying for some reason. This one's shit himself. Like, there's like all these different things. You're jumping around a lot, you know? You're quite busy jumping around. High school, obviously very different. First day, didn't really know what to expect. Looked on my roster. Okay, it's year 10 science. I'm going in there. Okay, I go into the room. I'm supporting a kid who's in a wheelchair. We're sitting at the back of the room. But... If anything, he knows more about science than me. We're sitting at the back of the room. The science teacher's at the front. I say, hey, mate, how's it going? All right, let's do the lesson. The teacher's sort of giving the lesson. I'm sitting there. I don't really know what my job is at this point. <laughs> at this point, I'm kind of just doing year 10 science. <laughs> Started really enjoying it. I felt like Billy Madison. I was like, this is pretty interesting, actually. Am I allowed to answer some of these? <laughs> he said it was sedimentary. I reckon it's igneous, that one, to be honest. Went to Chinese after, after science, that was great. Chinese teacher's explaining fortune cookies to us. She's like, fortune cookies started because there was a dictatorship in China. And at the time, all the revolutionaries wrote down these little messages, hid them inside biscuits, gave them out in the messages that said, tonight, meet here, we're going to overthrow this dictatorship. That's the origin of fortune cookies. The teacher's explaining this. Half the kids are on their phones. I'm like, guys, this is fucking sick. <laughs> Listen up, if this was a podcast, people would pay for it. This is cool as. We had drama at the end of the day, went to the drama class. That was a great lesson, Blo a bit of a bludge, but great subject. One of my favourite subjects, always has been one of my favourite. That was the subject where I was like, maybe I'm in too deep with this high school thing. I got too into it. I was really acting, really performing in the drama class. We had to, I'm with the kid that I'm supporting, we have to learn a scene from Pinocchio and then perform it to the rest of the class, right? And we did that, we learnt it, practised it, performed it to the rest of the class. Absolutely killed it, whatever, not important, who cares? <laughs> The teacher said that though, he was like, that was really good guys. And this is when I realised I was in too deep, because the teacher gave us all this praise. He was like, that was fantastic, really well done, great, the voices you used, the bits of improv, bloody good job, really well done guys. And I felt quite good about that. But then, I realised, the whole time he was giving us that praise, he was looking at the kid, and not at me. And I thought to myself, fuck you, if he shone, it's because I let him shine. I had that thought inside my head. <laughs> How ridiculous. But it's cool working with kids that age, year 7, 8, 9, 10, because you can have interesting conversations with them in a way that you can't really do with the younger kids. Like, you can have interesting chats about the world, they, they're watching things, they're engaging with the world. I was talking to this girl recently, year 8 girl, about favourite movies. Had an interesting conversation. Tell me if you think this is weird. She was telling me that her favourite movie is, I don't know what it's called, but it's like the Ted Bundy movie. It's about Ted Bundy. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, that's a bit crook, I reckon. Like, why is that your favourite movie? You're in year eight. Why are you even watching that movie? Why is that your favourite movie? She was like, it's got Zac Efron in it. I love him. So like, yeah, but it's America's Worst Serial Killer. It's not fucking High School Musical. I don't think you should be watching that. And I started giving her a lecture. I started saying, why are you engaging with this shit? When I was your age, I didn't even watch that many movies. I used to watch Obama give speeches. He was my hero. I loved that guy. I used to go home after school, watch Obama give inspiring speeches. That's what I was doing when I was 13. You should reassess the stuff that you're engaging with at your age. Kids are too smart these days. They're too informed. She looked at me, she listened to my little lecture, she looked at me and she said, Obama's killed way more people than Ted Bundy though. <laughs> Fuck! Now I have to go home and reevaluate my hero because of a 13 year old girl. I'm at home, I'm Googling it. What's he done? Why'd she say that? What's he done? Heaps of shit. He's done heaps. He's done heaps. I'm Googling it, 964. That's the number, that's the number they're giving me. Obama's drone strikes killed 964 innocent civilians. That's a big number, isn't it? I'm Googling, how many people did Ted Bundy kill? 36. Fuck, she's, she's, not, she's got a point, doesn't she? She's got a pretty good point. <laughs> I want to assure you, I'm not about to go into something where I like try to convince you that Barack Obama's a worse person than Donald Trump or something like that. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. I would never try to convince you of that. But 
I am going to try and convince you that he's worse than Ted Bundy because 964 <laughs> is so much more than 36. They're vastly different numbers. It's 928 more to be precise. I know that because I've been doing year 10 maths, smashing it, whatever. <laughs> if there was a fantasy football league for murderers, you get murderers on your team, the more murders they've done, <laughs> the better they are as a player. If you got Ted Bundy on your team, your friends would laugh at you. In the group chat, they'd be like, what the fuck are you doing, mate? 36, he's shit house. Get Obama. <laughs> He's a silent killer. You can get him at a good price. He flies under the radar, puts up good, consistent numbers. You could build a team around a guy like that. Get a few more stars in there. Get Hitler on a wing. Pol Pot on another. Ivan Milat down back. He doesn't have the best numbers, but he plays with a lot of heart, doesn't he? Puts his head over the ball. That's for sure. <laughs> Some people don't like this comparison, but... Let's go back to school. They were at school, we're hanging out at school. There's a bully at the school. They bash 36 kids. They suck, right? Oh, they bash 36 kids. They're the worst. I hate them. I'm not trying to convince you otherwise. They are definitely shit. But then, what if there's another bully who also happens to be the principal of the school? And they pay all the teachers to fly these little robotic planes around bashing 964 kids. Who's worse? It's obvious, isn't it? He's got a Nobel Peace Prize. Isn't that weird? 964 is quite a big number to have a prize that's got the word peace in it. That doesn't really seem... I think that's a bit strange, isn't it? I think we should strip him of that award. Or give Ted Bundy one. Because 36 is fuck all comparatively. If that's the metric... <laughs> 